Pastor Hubert of the Holy Trinity Catholic Church. He and another priest tell me that the pair of men have just administered the last rites of the Catholic Church to President Kennedy. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The president is dead. John F. Kennedy. The commission answers unequivocally Lee Harvey Oswald. Was Oswald acting alone, or was he a member of a conspiracy? The commission answers, he acted alone. Friday, November 22nd, 1963. My generation's vocabulary changed that day. New words, new phrases were added. And now, a half a century later, they're still there. Their roots born right here in downtown Dallas, Texas. The real story of the JFK assassination decades of doubts and conspiracy theories. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States, was assassinated on Friday, November 22, 1963, at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time in Dallas, Texas. While riding in a presidential motorcade through Dealey Plaza, Kennedy was riding with his wife Jacqueline, Texas Governor John Connolly, and Connolly's wife Nellie when he was fatally shot by former U.S. Marine Lee Harvey Oswald, firing an ambush from a nearby building. Governor Conley was seriously wounded in an attack. The motorcade rushed to Parkland Memorial Hospital where Kennedy was pronounced dead about 30 minutes after the shooting. Connolly recovered. Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. The president's body was brought to Lowe Field and placed on Air Force One before the plane took off. A grim-faced Lyndon B. Johnson stood in the tight, crowded compartment and took the oath of office, administered by U.S. Direct Court Judge Sarah Hughes. The brief ceremony took place at 2.38 p.m. Less than an hour earlier, police had arrested Lee Harvey Oswald, a recently hired employee at the Texas School Book Depository. He was being held for the assassination of President Kennedy and the fatal shooting. What is the Warren Commission? And who is Charles Thomas? What does his suicide have to do with the JFK assassination? On November 29, 1963, President Lyndon B. Johnson appointed the President's Commission on the Assassination of President Kennedy. It came to be known as the Warren Commission after its chairman, Earl Warren, Chief Justice of the United States. President Johnson directed the commission to evaluate matters relating to the assassination and the subsequent killing of the alleged assassin, and to report its findings and conclusions to him. It concluded that President Kennedy was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald and that Oswald acted entirely alone. It also concluded that Jack Ruby acted alone when he killed Oswald two days later. The commission's findings have proven controversial and have been both challenged and supported by later studies. Who is Harvey Oswald? Lee Harvey Oswald, born October 18, 1939, New Orleans, Louisiana, U.S., died November 24, 1963, Dallas, Texas. Accused assassin of U.S. President John F. Kennedy in Dallas on November 22, 1963. He himself was fatally shot two days later by Jack Ruby in the Dallas County Jail. A special president's commission on the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, better known as the Warren Commission because it was headed by Chief Justice Earl Warren, investigated from November 29, 1963 to September 24, 1964, and concluded that Oswald alone had fired the shots killing Kennedy, and that there was no evidence that either Oswald or Ruby had been part of any conspiracy. In January 1979, a special U.S. House of Representative Assassinations Committee, after a two-year investigation, reported that a second assassin may also have fired a shot and that there may have been a conspiracy. The evidence has remained highly debatable. At 12.30 p.m. on November 22, 1963, from a window on the sixth floor of the depository building, Oswald, using his mail-order rifle, had allegedly fired three shots that killed President Kennedy and wounded Texas Governor John B. Connolly in an open-car motorcade in Dealey Plaza. Oswald took a bus and a taxi to his rooming house, departed, and about a mile away was stopped by patrolman J.D. Tippett, who believed that Oswald resembled the suspect already being described over the police radio. Oswald killed Tippett with his mail-order rifle, 1.15 p.m. At about 1.45 p.m., Oswald was seized in the Texas theater by police officers responding to reports of a suspect. At 1.30 a.m. on November 23rd, he was formally arraigned for the murder of President Kennedy. On the morning of November 24th, while being transferred from a jail cell to an interrogation office, Oswald was shot by distraught Dallas nightclub owner, Jack Ruby. Ruby was tried and found guilty of murder, March 4th, 1964, and sentenced to death. In October 1966, a Texas appeals court reversed the conviction, but before a new trial could be held, Ruby died of a blood clot, complicated by cancer, January 3rd, 1967. Now, who is Charles Thomas? 
Charles Thomas was a rising star at the State Department in the early 1960s, a career diplomat who had served across Latin America and Africa. In 1971, at the age of 48, Thomas killed himself. The reasons for the suicide were not a complete mystery. Thomas had been despondent after he had been denied a promotion two years earlier and forced out of the State Department. According to the department, Thomas was denied a promotion because part of his personal record, including a glowing job evaluation from the embassy in Mexico, had been accidentally misfiled. Four decades later, Thomas Widow and others say that they are convinced they are still being denied the full truth about what put Thomas on a path to killing himself. In that cause, they are pleading with Donald Trump to release classified documents from the National Archives. The documents are long secret government files about, of all things, the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The Thomas family are certain that Thomas lost his career and ultimately his will to live because senior officials were determined to shut down his persistent, unwelcome, and ultimately fruitless effort to reopen an investigation of JFK's murder. In one memo, Thomas warned that the Mexico information threatened to reopen the debate about the true nature of the Kennedy assassination and damage the credibility of the Warren report. For historians, Oswald's trip to Mexico has never been adequately explained. Available records show that the CIA and FBI knew much more about it. Oswald, a Marine Corps vet and self-declared Marxist who had once tried to defect to the Soviet Union, met in Mexico with Cuban and Soviet diplomats and spies, and according to a long secret FBI report, talked openly about his plan to kill Kennedy. Assassination Records Collection Act In 1992, Congress passed the JFK Assassination Records Collection Act. Lawmakers hoped it would dump down raging conspiracy theories. The law called for release of all assassination-related documents. As a result, millions of pages were made public in the 1990s. Several thousand other documents, initially held back because of national security concerns, were supposed to have been released last October, the 25th anniversary of the law's passage. Previously declassified files show that CIA officers in Mexico conducted close surveillance of Oswald as he apparently sought a visa to defect to Havana. The files show that he visited both the Cuban and Soviet embassies and that he may have had a brief affair with a Mexican woman who worked in the Cuban consulate. In a once classified 2013 internal CIA report, the agency's chief historian concluded that the CIA had conducted a benign cover-up to withhold incendiary information. The cover-up, the report said, was intended to keep the commission focused on what the agency believed at the time was the best truth, that Lee Harvey Oswald, for his yet undetermined motives, had acted alone in killing John Kennedy. In a memo written in 1969, in his final days at the department, Thomas made a last plea that someone go back to Mexico. Though he made no allegations that Fidel Castro had any personal role in any plot to kill Kennedy, Thomas wanted the U.S. to investigate whether the Warren Commission had missed evidence of a conspiracy in JFK's death between Oswald and Cubans loyal to the Castro regime. The memo outlined a story that Thomas first heard in 1965 from a friend, Elena Guerrero de Paz, a prominent Mexican writer whose husband, Octavio Paz, later won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Garrow said she had encountered Oswald at a family dance party in Mexico City in the fall of 1963 that was attended by Cuban diplomats and Mexican leftists who supported the Castro Revolution. According to Garrow, people at the party had spoken openly of their hope that Kennedy would be killed. According to Garrow, who died in 1998, Oswald was invited to the party by Sylvia Duran, a vivacious young woman who worked at the Cuban consulate. Garrow told Thomas she was certain Oswald and Duran had a brief affair. In the years since, Thomas' paperwork was made public. Duran, who is still alive, has insisted that she did not have an affair with Oswald and only met him inside the Cuban consulate. But other Mexicans, including members of Duran's extended family, have disputed her account. A Mexican journalist recalled seeing Oswald at a separate reception at the Cuban embassy. For those who believe that the assassination was the sole work of Oswald, an ex-Marine who had failed in nearly every endeavor, including an attempt to defect to Moscow, the newly released documents offer the final proof. And for those who believe that Oswald didn't act alone, the documents also offer substantiation. This will feed another generation of assassination buffs, the children of assassination buffs, said Edward J. Epstein, who wrote three books and an anthology on the assassination. Did Lee Harvey Oswald shoot President Kennedy? CBS News concludes that he did. <laughs>